Welcome to the 2022 Flow Grappling Awards. Today we're going to be breaking down, celebrating, reviewing the best performances, the best athletes of the entire year of 2022 in Jiu-Jitsu and grappling. Myself, Corey Stockton here with Trey Robinson. Trey, tell me what's going on today. Man, I'm excited for this one. The Flow Grappling Awards is always an exciting time of the year. We've been watching athletes put it on the line all year long, trying to go out there, have the best matches possible, get the best submissions possible. And now today's the day where we get to kind of honor that hard work, give some people the accomplishment of becoming a Flow Grappling Award winner. I know we got a few categories we're going to run through. We got five categories we're going to run through today crown some new champions of the Flow Grappling Awards. That's right. Today we're going through Breakthrough Grappler of the Year, Match of the Year, Submission of the Year, Female and Male Grapplers of the Year. You got a favorite category? I love Submission of the Year, but man, there's there's a there's a lot to choose from. Submission of the Year just has that that special mm-hmm. place in my heart, right? That that one moment that defines somebody's career. That's right. And you're I mean, that's the pinnacle of the sport too, the submission, you know? So that's what it's always about. I personally huge fan of Match of the Year. I think it's always great whenever two guys two females, whoever it may be, two grapplers, go out there, put it all on the line, and they both agree that they're going to put on a show for the fans. But let's go ahead and get into our first category. We're going to kick things off with the 2022 Breakthrough Grappler of the Year. This category is someone that was able to transcend themselves to the next level in the sport. That means they're performing at the highest level. They broke through that glass ceiling, and now they're somebody that people recognize, somebody people want to watch do jiu-jitsu. What do you think about this category? Yeah, all these athletes, all the breakthrough grapplers have different paths to get there, right? Some some athletes kind of just hit that next level, find that next gear, and some go 0 to 100. We have all sorts of different types of athletes on this list. Let's take a look at our nominees. Here we go. The nominees for 2022 Breakthrough Grappler of the Year. We're kicking things off with Canada's finest, Brianna St. Marie. Brianna obviously had a great year winning trials, getting a silver medal at ADCC, coming back, finishing the year, getting a gold medal at Nogi World. Just a great year overall for Brianna. Got to talk about Giancarlo Giancarlo Bodoni as well. Giancarlo won ADCC in his very first year there, submitted three of his four opponents in his division, also won uh, a match in the absolute and then our third nominee is going to be Amy Campo. Amy Campo has just been on a terror in the women's division all year, basically winning everything she enters. Another ADCC champion on the list. Great year from Amy Campo. Isaac Michelle of Who's Next. He won the Who's Next finale to become the very first Who's Next champion. Also, ADCC trials right into ADCC where he had uh, arguably one of the best matches. And then his teammate J-Rod is also on the list. J-Rod obviously had the incredible West Coast Trials all submissions performance. He ended it with that buggy choke that shook the world. So uh, overall, man, this is a great class of nominees for Breakthrough Grappler. It was a great year overall for Jiu-Jitsu. We already know that. But everyone on this list, very awarding or very deserving to be there. Yeah, so many of these athletes really just entered into not just the highest level, but the top top level of competition where now all of these athletes are essentially number one contenders or or right up there with them. Um, Let's take a look at our new Breakthrough Grappler of the Year. Representing New Wave, Giancarlo Bodoni! Congratulations to the Breakthrough Grappler of the Year, Giancarlo Bodoni. Uh, man, he looked fired up winning ADCC, and, and wouldn't you? Oh, of course, man. You see there at the end of the clip, he's he's walking on the mat. He's yelling, this is my house. This is my house. And, man, this is your award too, Giancarlo. You killed it this year. Uh, just overall, just a great year from Giancarlo. Obviously, he joined New Wave somewhat recently. He's been training with John Danaher, Gordon Ryan, those guys. And uh, he, he rose to the pinnacle of the sport. 
Yeah, and, and really just to go into ADCC in your first year as a trials winner and to not just submit three opponents, which is ridiculous by itself, right, but to, to submit the a former bronze medalist, a former champion, and uh, <laughs> um, and, and another another breakthrough star there, right, in, in uh, Owen O'Flanagan. Uh, John Carlo just looked absolutely incredible and really now, in, in my eyes, in the top of his category. Yeah, of course. If you're talking about the best grapplers at 88 kilograms, Giancarlo Bodoni is in that conversation every single time. But let's see what uh, let's see what Giancarlo. I think we've got a video of him uh, reacting to winning the award. Let's see what he has to say about this accomplishment. What's up, guys? Uh, just making this video to thank everyone who voted for me as Breakthrough Grappler of the Year. I want to say thanks to Flo for the nomination and everybody for the continued support. Um, it was a great year, 2022. Great year for me. Great year for our sport. Um, really excited to have been a part of this amazing uh, event and i um, really excited to see where the sport goes in the future. Uh, I got a lot of stuff planned for 2023, so stay tuned and looking forward to what's next. There we go. Congratulations again to Giancarlo. Very deserving of this award. Super stoked for Giancarlo. Everyone on that list could have won the award, to be honest with you, but I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad John Carlos getting some recognition for the hard work he put in throughout this year. Yeah, Bra breakthrough grapple of the year was one of the more contentious awards as far as as far as voting goes, but John Carlo absolutely deserved. Um, and I think it's about time to move on to our next category. Here we go. The next category, one of my favorites, the 2022 Best Match of the Year. Man, this award, obviously a little bit self-explanatory. You know a good match when you see one. You know a snoozer whenever you're watching one. And these ones are all certified slobber knockers. So let's just jump right in and see who's nominated for Best Match of the Year. Uh, best Match of the Year. Right, we're going to kick things off here with Cade Rusolo and PJ Barge. Just an absolute firestorm of the semifinal match. These two went after each other from bell to bell, bell to submission. Yeah, they were takedown submission attempts. You saw it all. And then our next nominee, Gordon Ryan versus Felipe Pena 3. Went down on who's number one. This was obviously a no time limit match. Just an in, overall, just an insane match, man. We've never seen both these guys in some of these positions, but exciting all the way through. So that's a, such a tense matchup there, as was Fionn Davis versus Bia Mosquita. The rubber match, right? They, they had gone one on one in ADCC's, trial, ADCC's past. This was the match to square things off, and neither was willing to give an inch. And then let's kick it back to West Coast Trials. Damian Anderson versus Andrew Tackett. I think 90% of this match took place off the mats, which if you're if you're throwing down like that ADCC, it's exciting. This Isaac Michelle versus Wagner Rocha actually won ADCC's match of the tournament. It was an incredible match, really got things going at ADCC. Uh, both these guys left everything on the mat and went to Wagner Rocha. And then our final nominee, Nicholas Marigali versus Tai Ruotolo in the absolute division. We saw takedowns, we saw submission attempts. This one was electric. The, I remember the crowd being on their feet the entire time. But overall, man, all of these matches were bangers. They were great to watch. Do you have any any memories of any of these that stand out to you, Corey? Uh, I specifically remember uh, <clears throat> Nicholas Marigali versus Tai Ruotolo. Just uh, witnessing really firsthand how many people were at ADCC. That was the moment where I realized that it felt like the Super Bowl, right? It just the 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 power from the crowd made that match part of what it was. Yeah, I remember Mo Jaslam had a line uh, leading up to the World Championships whenever we were doing some embedded stuff where he said it was going to be the Woodstock of Jiu-Jitsu, and that always stuck with me. I feel like that is a good description of what it was like. It was like, man, just a ton of people there who love Jiu-Jitsu, watching it all go down, and Obviously, the best match of the year was skewed. There's a lot of ADCC matches on there, but, man, it's hard not to, man. Everything at ADCC this year is incredible. Yeah. But you want to you wanna go ahead and jump right into the winner? Yeah, let's, uh, let's see who won best match of the year.
congratulations to Cade Rutolo and PJ Barch. Let me just set the stage for you on this match, right? Uh, day one of ADCC is over. Cade Rutolo finishes two by submission. Moving on to day two, as is PJ Barch, who uh, won his first match and then defeated reigning champion JT Torres in the second match. These two square off in the semifinal, and I don't think a single eye in the crowd was not on this match. Oh, definitely not. I remember when this was going down, I was on the mat next to it, actually, uh, filming some stuff, you know, trying to do my job as best I could. But I could not stop looking over, checking out Cade versus PJ. I mean, it was just one of those moments where you know something electric is going down. It was a back and forth match to begin. PJ came out. He was he was trying to put the pace on him, trying to get some takedowns. Cade, man, Cade has just so much swagger on the match. It's <laughs> insane. He's doing the hands out. He's kind of like baiting him, trying to get him to take a leg different times. But ultimately, he was able to do what the Ruotolos do, get a submission, find a way to get the finish. And uh, this is part of Cade's historic run as becoming the youngest ever ADCC champion as well, which I think is another part about this that makes it incredible. Absolutely. And you can never really keep your eyes off the mat when a Ruotolo is on the match, but especially when it's against an aggressive, wrestle-heavy, willing opponent, right? And PJ is just that for Cade Rotolo, was just that for Cade Rotolo. Uh, very, towards the end of the match when, when Cade got his submission, PJ was probably turning the attack on the most. So mm -hmm. neither of these guys willing to back down. Uh, both of them very, very deserving for best match of the year. And congratulations to both of them. Yeah, and also it's worth noting, Cade Ruotolo has won back-to-back -back best matches, man. This guy's the best match machine. What can you say? Yeah, you, you can't deny it when it's true, not just once but twice in a row. That's right, but we got some more awards to get to. So, the 2022 Submission of the Year. This is an exciting one, man. This is kind of what Jiu-Jitsu is all about, if I'm being honest, Corey. Yeah, absolutely. My favorite category, it is the defining moment, the defining task, the defining wish of Jiu-Jitsu, right, for fans and for the best athletes, is that we get to see, we get to enjoy submissions. Uh, submission of the year can be so many things, right, whether it's a flashy technique or something new and stylish, something just old and iconic that always works just on at a really high level. Yeah, so let's jump in. Let's see who is nominated for the Submission of the Year. So many different submissions could have really received this nomination, but here were the top six that we pulled out. Uh, first being Pato Zilak at ADCC against Ken Kennedy Maciel. Just a, such a vicious submission. We see, saw a bunch of these this year. Yeah, the Zilak's a gnarly one, dude. But up next is Josh Cisneros at West Coast Trials hitting the Cisneros stretch, if I'm being honest with you. I mean, this thing is sick. It just looks awesome. It's in, he busted it out of nowhere. Great submission by Josh. How about the buggy choke by Jay Rodriguez? Uh, this, the final of his eight submission run to win ADCC trials. Just an incredible, incredible finish. And then here we got Mika Galvao down in Brazil at the uh, Brazilian ADCC trials, hitting that coyote arm bar. And this one, this one confuses my brain. I don't know how he does it. How about this Heisem Rita arm bar over Cyborg in the very first round of ADCC. Such a, a, an ecstatic moment for Cyborg and really a, a huge opportunity for him. And then our final one here is Gordon Ryan's rear naked choke against Andre Galvao. This one was just an iconic moment, a passing of the torch from one legend to another. So uh, overall, man, these are all great nominations. Any of them stand out to you before we get into the winner? I mean, so many of them, but really just the, those two, the Z-Lock and the Sulu have stretched, the Cisnero stretch, right? Just brutal, brutal submissions at very important times in those guys' careers and in those guys' runs towards the top. Definitely. I think a couple that stand out to me, mainly for the moment, more so than the the technical submission itself is Gordon submitting Andre Galvao just because, man, Andre Galvao is such a legend. You can't say enough good things about Andre Galvao. He's one of the pioneers of the sport, helped get it to a place where now it can take off even further. And so having that moment where Gordon Ryan, the now no-gi goat, kind of takes over that torch and moves along with a submission like that, I think it's a great moment. But also, man, Heisom submitting Cyborg and the eruption of the crowd, just two incredible moments built around those submissions. Absolutely. Let's see. Who wins this award this year? Submission of the year coming up.
is, man. The giraffe. Hi, Samrita. Are you not entertained, dude? This moment was one of the craziest moments I've ever been a part of in a sporting event. I was just grateful to be Matt's side filming this because when when Heisom caught that arm bar and was able to get the separation, get the finish, it's like the crowd was waiting on the edge of their seat. AD, you got to remember, ADCC kicks off with the big boys, the nine, plus 99 kilograms. So right away, you got to see Gordon, Felipe Pena on the mat, some big names, and the crowd was glued in. They were just chomping at the bit, waiting for something crazy. And man, Heisom submitting Cyborg was that thing. The crowd erupted. It cut The video cuts off right before you see Heisom go running along the side. The fans screaming his name, high-fiving people. It was just such an incredible moment. Like, something I'll remember forever. I've talked with Heisom. I know he'll remember it forever. It was just incredible. That, that moment for me, because I, I, I'm right with you, I, I that moment has such like a tangible, palpable feeling. But it was for me, like, the 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 finish was incredible and it was a obviously an emotional moment for Heisen but it was also I think the moment that brought the crowd at ADCC to life mm-hmm. for the very first time and it really defined like this is what this insane event is going to be like is if if this first round match makes the crowd pop like that I can't wait to see the rest of it Heisen really set it all off right he was the, the kind of first domino yeah he was that. that spark the crowd needed to finally just lose their minds everyone started going crazy but Let's, let's see what Heisom has to say about winning this award. I know he was super grateful whenever we told him about it. What's up, guys? Uh, it's Heisom the Giraffe Rita. Uh, man, I'm, I'm very honored, humbled, and very grateful to receive this award. It means a lot to me. A lot of hard work went into um, ADCC preparation, and it feels nice you know, to get the recognition. And um, even though it says Heisom Rita, and this is far from an individual achievement, I want to give a huge shout out to the fans, everybody who voted for me. This wouldn't be possible without you guys. So thank you very much to my team, my guy, David Garmo, my t- training partners. You all know yourselves. Thank you very much. And uh, I can't forget the day ones, man. Um, <clears throat> uh, from Carpe Diem, Yukishikawa, Alavanka, Yamada Shiketaka, to my guy, Thomas Metz. And man, can't forget the sponsors, Hyperfly, Hyperfly is a pen designed for sport, man. I always appreciate the support and you guys already know, um, this is just the beginning, man. The Giraffe Shows continues. Us. There you have it. Hi, some Rita, submission of the year. Corey, go ahead and translate what he said for us. The, the giraffe hitting his fans all over the globe. Right. right. <laughs> Mr. International, hi, some Rita by way of Ghana and Japan, man. Now through Detroit, but... Super stoked for Heisel, man. Very deserving. That was an incredible moment. Um, but, yeah, awesome all around. Yeah, let's move right into our next category here, uh, Female Grappler of the Year. For me, this was maybe one of the hardest uh, categories this year to to list just six nominees. There were so many uh, women here that, that broke through. We narrowed it down to the top five, but really there were a lot that were left out that were just that close to being on the list here. Yeah, but overall, this is a super tight category, and uh, let's just jump right in to see who's nominated. Up first here for Female Grappler of the Year, we've got Amy Campo. She was also nominated for Breakthrough Grappler of the Year. Just a tremendous year for Amy Campo. Ended up on top at ADCC. You have to be nominated there after a performance like that. Of course, and then we have Gabby Pisania. Man, Gabby Pisania, when it comes to the gi, she's kind of running things right now. Absolute, her division, it doesn't matter. If Gabby Pisania is in your way, you got a tough route. So she's been killing it in the gi. Fionn Davis, of course, made history this year. Uh, the first Welsh uh, ADCC champion, also the first Welsh gi uh, world champion. So incredible, incredible year for Fionn. And then up next, we have Brianna St. Marie again. Obviously, Brianna's also up for Breakthrough Grappler. Um, But Brianna, just a great year overall. She got the silver medal. She won West Coast Trials. The end of 2021, she won uh, East Coast Trials. But great, great job by her. And then Maisa Bastos, you can never leave her off the list. This is actually her third time in a row being nominated for Breakthrough Grappler of the Year, for Female Grappler of the Year. She won it the last two. um, But again, a grand slam for Maisa this year. Same goes for Gabby Passander, by the way, who took a double, double grand slam. Uh, throughout the year in the IBJJF season. Yeah, so overall, just great nominees. A lot of these nominees are also be- beyond ADCC or IBJJF. They've also had great performances on Who's Number One, Brianna St. Marie being one of them, Maisa Bastos, Fionn Davies, all doing great on the Who's Number One stage as well. So you want to you wanna jump right into the winner of this one, Corey? Yeah, let's take a look at who won this, uh, this category this year, Female Grappler of the Year coming up.
absolutely incredible year for Fionn Davis. Uh, you heard Howell there, the first ever British-born uh, IBJJF world champion. She then followed that up, first ever British-born ADCC world champion. Just absolutely incredible, historic year for Fionn Davis. She looked dominant. Yeah, if you win Gi World and you win ADCC World, how do you not win Female Grappler or Male Grappler of the Year? So I think very well deserving of Fionn to uh, take away this. She had incredible year, exciting matches all year round. But let's hear from Fionn, see what she has to say about winning the award. Hi, guys. Just want to say a big thank you to those who uh, voted for me as Female Grappler of the Year. Or should I say, we say thank you. This is my cat. Um... But yeah, lots of really amazing girls were nominated. Um, even girls who weren't nominated who could have been on that list. So it was just an honor to have been considered at all, let alone voted as the winner. Hurry! Um, so hopefully next year is, is, is even better. Um, or potentially this is the peak of my career, in which case, um, I will try to enjoy. And yeah, just thanks again. And I don't know how to, to finish this. Well spoken as always from Fion. I got to say that I do not think this is probably the end or the peak of Fion's career. I feel like we got a lot more of uh, great jujitsu to come from Fion still. Come on, let's be honest. Fion is just getting started. That's right. right? And uh, I can see her winning this award for years to come. She's just such a, a dominant athlete. Uh, aside from aside from a, a grappler, right? Her her takedowns are sharp her arm bars are world class her top pressure is world class fion has a long way still to uh, still to go but she's climbed already near the top yeah so congratulations to fion davis the 2022 female grappler of the year and so now we just have one category left our final category is the 2022 male grappler of the year category so many athletes in contention for this uh, for this category for this award this year, um, we saw some of the best athletes in the world at ADCC, but also at Worlds, at Pans, at Euros, at Brasileiros, all over the world. Uh, really difficult to choose from this year, uh, but we had to narrow it down to five. Uh, let's talk about our top five. Let's see who the nominees are for the Male Grappler of the Year. We're gonna kick things off with. Cade Ruatolo. Cade, obviously, the historic run for submissions at ADCC, the youngest ever. Incredible performance by Cade this year. Incredible to watch, as always. Cade undefeated in his 2022 season, as was this man, Gordon Ryan. Uh, he didn't just have an undefeated season, but he had a historic run, becoming the third, uh, becoming the first ever to win three different ADCC titles, also beating Andre Galdaf with Penna. And then we got Mika Galvao. Mika became the youngest ever IBJJF World Champion. He also came out on the ADCC stage and took silver only behind Cade Ruotolo. Some great who's number one performances as well. Mika's teammate, Baby Shark, the ADCC World Champion, Diogo Hayes. Uh, just kind of could be a breakout, breakthrough grappler candidate too as well. For sure. And then we have Nicholas Marigali. Marigali was able to capture absolute gold at IBJJF Worlds. He then came out, got a silver and a bronze medal at the ADCC World Championship. With just five months of, uh, of Nogi experience. That's huh? right. And then you add his who's number one performances as well. Incredible year by him, but incredible year overall by all those guys. Like you mentioned a little bit, Diogo could have for sure been nominated up for Breakthrough Grappler. The Baby Shark, we saw his transformation from the Baby Shark to the Megalodon. You know, we saw all these guys just go out every every big event, every training session, put it all on the line, put up some great matches, great performances. So um, I, I'm excited to see who wins this one, Corey. You, yeah. got any, you got anything about these guys that stand out to you? I mean, just so many, so many record setters, right? Mm -hmm. Like Mika set a record. Uh, Kate Rutolo set a record. Gordon set a world record. So, I mean, all of these athletes coming out, the, the level is just rising and rising and rising. Um, I, I think we're just going to see history continue to be made in the next couple of years in grappling. Let's go ahead and roll the tape. Let's see who is your 2022 male grappler of the year. Out of the red corner, representing New Wave, the three-time ADCC champion, the King Gordon. The 
King, Gordon Ryan, the 2022 Male Grappler of the Year. Correct me if I'm wrong here, Corey, but is this the first time Gordon Ryan has ever won the yeah. Flow Grappling Awards Grappler of the Year? Believe it or not, Gordon Ryan is now a first-time Male Grappler of the Year. I think that's uh, shocking to some people. We were talking with uh, with the wrestling team, the Flow wrestling team, earlier, and they said, let me guess, Gordon again. But it's actually it's his first time. Uh, but this year... Another historic year for him, right? He became the first athlete ever to win three different ADCC categories. He also became the first to win the ADCC weight category and the super fight in the same year. Uh, he ha now has five ADCC titles in three years of, of doing the event. Uh, not to mention uh, a big win over a almost lifelong rival in Felipe Pena. This had to be Gordon Ryan's year. Yeah, I mean, just overall, just an incredible year from Gordon Ryan. Anyone you put out there against Gordon Ryan, Gordon was just able to show pure dominance the entire year. He had the fastest submission at ADCC. Uh, like you said, he won his division. He won the super fight against Andre Galvao, a legend of the sport. So I, I think everyone on this list was incredibly deserving. Like you said, there were so many record breakers on this list that it makes it very hard when we have so many people who now hold records in the sport of jiu-jitsu, but only one person can win the award of the Grappler of the Year. But incredible year by Gordon. Let's see what the King has to say about uh, winning this award. What's up, guys? Male Grappler of the Year? Every year. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, in all seriousness, thank you guys um, for, for supporting me. Thank you guys. I know you guys voted on Flow, um, and uh, I just happened to win. Um, and... I always say there's a big difference between fans and supporters, and uh, you know what I have are definitely loyal supporters. Um, so thank you guys so much. Love you all. Thank you for voting, and uh, stay tuned for 2023 because it's going to be a big year. That's a full trophy case there for the King Gordon Ryan. I'm hoping he can find some room for his uh, his nice new shiny flow grappler uh, flow grappling grappler of the year award. Um, yeah, definitely. It's a nice chair, too. I'm thinking we need to pull one of those bad boys in here for me, huh? What do you think? Maybe next show I get a big throne like that? <laughs> we'll see if we can make it work. But, man, Corey, just an incredible year of jiu-jitsu overall. What, just anything else that stood out to you over this year or anything you want to say about the uh, the awards? Man, I, I was watching back through a lot of the footage that we have uh, from all of 2022, and there are so many moments that I thought that, like that could have been a match of the year nominee or mm -hmm. could have been, you know, a finalist. That submission could have been a finalist. There was so much jujitsu that happened this year and so much high level jujitsu. Like I said uh, a couple minutes ago, that level just keeps rising. We're just going to keep having harder and harder discussions in this room, trying to figure out who is the best, what was the best, uh, what match submission athlete was the best, had the best moment. So um, I love that the athletes keep on making this harder for us. Of course, man. You got to give a big shout out to all the coaches, all the athletes out there. When it comes down to it, that's what it's all about. It's about the athletes. If it wasn't for them going out there, putting it on the line, putting their bodies on the line, their, their everything, and giving us this entertainment, this sport we love, then none of this would be possible. So thank you to all the athletes. Thank you to everyone who's competed throughout the year. Thank you to everyone who was nominated. We appreciate you guys for going out there, putting on a show, giving us something we can come back here and talk about. So it's just a great year overall for jiu-jitsu. Glad we could be a part of it in a small way. Yeah, and also huge thank you to everybody who voted. Uh, you guys came out in droves supporting your favorite athletes, making this project possible. Uh, so looking forward to you guys coming back out and doing the same in about 12 months from now, right? Uh, Flow Grappling Awards continue. We're already starting to look at matches coming up in euros and beyond that's right i got my i got my notepad you know i'm writing any notes i'm not missing any this year I, everything that happens i'm gonna have notes about it so for 2023 nothing's being overlooked but if you guys want to go check out some of those matches the full match replays the best highlights submissions content articles news anything you want it's all going to be on flowgrappling.com go subscribe to our youtube channel flow grappling go follow us on instagram at flow grappling make sure you guys are staying up to date with all the best there is to offer in the jiu-jitsu world i'm trey robinson that's Corey stockton thank you guys for tuning in to the 2022 flow grappling award show